everybody. Welcome to another Magic of Voxel demonstration. My name is Aaron Robinson. Today we're going to look at the new tools, new features that were added in the 0.97.1 release of Magic of Voxel. So thanks to at EPH Tracy on Twitter for the new features that were just added. Let's take a look at what you can do. We're going to go ahead and load up the uh, character old man model here that comes with Magic of Voxel. And first we have some new export options. So under file export we have two new ones, the PLY and the MC. Uh, .poy gives you, a, or the poy one gives you a .poy file, but still is very voxely in cubey. The MC one also gives you a .poy file, but it is in the marching cube algorithm, which um, sort of rounds out or 45 degree angles out uh, the corner. So you can just select that, and you can do the uh, old guy there, and I've already exported him. Um, you want to see then if your 3D program will allow you to import a .poy file. Maya, for example, will not. You'll need a plugin for that. Uh, but Blender will. Uh, the point two, or I'm sorry, the 2.76 release of Blender. You can just go up to uh, File and select Import, and then you want this Stanford.ply. And we will go to uh, where Magic Voxel, the new version, is installed on my computer. And we will grab the old man there and hit Import PLY. And you can see instead of those hard edges, uh, what we have are these kind of 45-ish degree angles. You would need to apply a uh, texture to this guy and uh, unwrap his UVs possibly and all that kind of stuff like that to get that map back on him. Okay, he's whatever this color is for some reason. So those are the new export options. You can play around with those, uh, probably in Blender. Good luck for with Maya. I know there's at least one plugin that says it'll do it for free, and there's also a paid plugin for Maya that will let you get a .ply file in there. Other new features that we have are a bunch of new uh, brush shapes and some shaders, some new shaders. And these are not the kind of shaders you apply to your model to make them look different. Um, in terms of color, these are the types of shaders that are basically um, mathematical algorithms that generate voxels in a sort of pattern, if you will. We'll take a look at them a second when we do a quick demo project. So we're going to go over and look at the brushes. Uh, a couple of the brushes got some new tools here. The brush that I previously called the circle brush, because it only made circles, uh, is actually called the center mode brush. And now you can do circles or squares with it. So there's a square and there is a circle, and the even and odd settings, which actually used to say even and odd, now just do O and E for odd, um, and those have to do with how many voxels are on the edges here. So this is an even one, because it has three. Um, you can count those, and you can just toggle those right there. Okay, so that is the new center mode brush functionality. The pattern brush functionality is also pretty great. Before, with patterns, you could just go ahead and select a pattern from here, like we will do the, uh, old man here and we could just put him here and here and that was all you could do with the pattern brush you could just bring it in um, so a couple new things with the pattern brush first you have the color source for the pattern brush and what this does is it says um, it's a little hard to explain stick with me here if you don't understand how the magic voxel color swatches um, work go ahead and watch my video on everything you wanted to know about Magic of Voxel color swatches I think you can actually search for that title and be all right um, so what's happening here is it's actually easier to explain from the palette. I'm going to zero out the scene. And if I have palette selected, it means when it stamps this pattern, it's going to use whatever color I have selected um, as a swatch over here. So if I change it to a blue, it's going to do blue. Not too complicated to understand that. A little more complicated is what happens when you select origin. Origin, you would think it means whatever colors were saved out with this model before it came a pattern. So this white and the skin tones and all that stuff. And what it actually means is the swatches, the, the space that those swatches were sampled from when the model was created, um, it's going to use those same spots. So let's take a look at what that means. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the eyedropper sort of pick voxel color thing. And I'm going to see that if I select this beige color, that's actually this slot down here. And if I select this gray color, that's this swatch over here. And if I select uh, the white, that is this um, swatch right here. So it's not saving the color necessarily. It's saving the locations of the colors that were used. And I know this is the way it works because if we go ahead and zero out our scene, select the pattern brush, um, we're going to go ahead and attach this time and we select a new color palette, such as this one, we get a different colored guy. But we do get the same position. So if I select the white one, it's still down here. Where the skin tone was, it's still in the same spot. And if I switch back to the right palette, he'll turn the right color. 
So that's the difference between palette, which samples from, which makes the model color just from one color from the color swatch and the origin feature, which saves the slots, not the colors, but the slots. Um, the only other new thing about the pattern brush is actually pretty exciting is it's best to do a fill here. Um, let's go ahead and go, sorry, full. And before we could only attach with the pattern brush. Now we can erase and paint, which is fantastic. So you can see I can paint my guy on there, which is fun. And I can also e use his shape um, to erase things. So those are two new features too. You can now erase with a pattern brush You can grab the monument pattern brush and um, go in there and you can paint with it too. So, all right. The next new feature is the voxel brush, which got a lot of, uh, not a lot, got some significant updates here. Uh, before with the vo voxel brush, you could add um, voxels and you could add voxels in a group according to a sphere uh, or a cube. So you can set a cube at nine and you could go ahead and hit attach and you could add a cube or you could add a sphere. And that's all you do. And it always added it um, by volume. And so what you can do now is you can actually switch between three different modes. You can add, erase, or paint um, by volume, which is this 3D setting, by 2D plane or flat, and by surface. And the 2D and the surface seem kind of similar, but they're super duper different. And let me show you an example of how they're different really quickly here. So we're going to go ahead and go into volume mode for, or 3D mode for the voxel brush. We're gonna create a sphere that is 16 voxels in, um, size and we'll go ahead and put we're going to need a bigger workspace here let's go with much bigger let's go with 32 and we will go ahead and put one here and one here so that's how volume works it, it gives you the full volume of it if you want to paint uh, well i'm going to show you that in a second let's not get ahead of ourselves um, if you want to use the 2d mode for um, attaching you can see it does not give you the full volume it gives you a plane Okay, so let's take a look at what these other two ones do, these, this 2D and the surface. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look. So the voxel brush is another, so the voxel brush isn't, So the voxel brush is another brush that got a couple of updates to it here. Um, before you could attach uh, a race and a paint just using um, just one voxel, kind of like a pencil tool, or in a group of voxels shaped like a sphere. That's a new feature. Shaped like a sphere or shaped like a square. So that's what you were able to do. Now you can actually um, select these three different modes of the voxel brush, which is a 3D volume mode. Uh, which is kind of the one we had before, and then a new 2D mode, which just operates on one plane, and then a surface mode, which is kind of like an overlay, if you will. And the easiest way to uh, show you these is to kind of demonstrate them here, and I'm going to start by doing a sphere that's 32 pixels, and we're going to just do volume mode, which is kind of what we had um, before. And we'll just make them white. We'll put one there and one there. So that's how volume works. You know if you erase with it, it kind of takes out the, uh, it takes out the volume, you paint with it well that's what we're going to get into okay so we have two different spheres here and the 2d mode what the 2d mode does we'll go into paint to do this is it tries to find a plane and paint only on that so here because the red sort of indicator square is moving along this axis it's singling out that plane and it's going to operate just on that and so if we move it on top it's switching sort of its orientation to be a flat plane moving back there um, so that's how plane works. What surface mode does is overlays over the top of it. I think we're going to need three spheres. Let's make another one here really quickly. So I'll select the eyedropper, sample this color, hit attach, and we'll put a um, 3D sphere right there. Okay. So it's pretty easy. Let me go ahead and get my blue back here. Sample that. And we're going to go back to paint, voxel. Okay. So it's pretty easy to see how 2D works in terms of it just operating on one plane, even if it's kind of buried. The surface mode, what it is is kind of like an overlay. So I'm gonna just put an overlay over here and that colored all those voxels right there. And then I'm gonna do 3D mode, which is volume and do the exact same thing. 
Now the difference between then the 3D and the surface is if I start erasing some of these faces, on the one that just did it over the surface, I should still expect to see white uh, underneath here. So let's take a look if that's true, and it is. You can see how there is still white hidden underneath this. On the surface one, it should have penetrated, and I should expect to see blue all the way down in here, which I do. So those are kind of the difference between a uh, volume operation, which kind of penetrates the model, or it does the full volume of the particular um, cube or sphere that you have selected. The 2D, which attempts to do it just on a plane, it will even add just to a plane, so you can make like a saw blade looking thing there. And the surface, which attempts to overlay over the top of it. So that's the new modes for the voxel uh, brush there. The uh, face brush didn't really get any updates, and the box brush didn't get any updates um, either. So let's look at the other new um, update, which are the shaders. There's some new shaders, and these are not shaders in terms of um, thinking about like 3D shaders. These are mathematical sort of algorithmic-y things that create voxels according to um, some kind of formula. And these are the ones that come with them, the wave, the sphere, the poly, the mand, which I'm not sure what that stands for, probably mandel, mandelbrot or something like that, and the dill one here, maybe a dilution, I'm not sure what that stands for. Okay, so the way you invoke these or use these, I'm gonna go ahead and zero out my scene, is you go ahead to the console down here and you type in XS and then put a space and then type in the one you want, such as wave. And it created this wave right here for me. I'm not sure if this is the default one because I have been messing with them, but there you go. So let's go ahead and take a look at the brushes and the shaders now. We're going to go ahead and use the Mandelbrot. I think it stands for Mandelbrot. I really don't know. To create a funky shape, and that's not the color we want. It does create the shader based on whatever color swatch you have selected here. So if I type in excess Mand now, it gave me the color that I had selected here. And this is actually pretty, pretty big for what we're doing. So let's go ahead and go down to 64 here and type in excess MND, and we get this shape. And now we're gonna go to one of the new tools. Uh, we'll go to the voxel brush, and we're gonna go to the erase. And the mode that we wanna do is surface. So um, 32 seems pretty big, 24. And what we're gonna do is just car carve out, and let's go with square. We're gonna carve out, 24 is even really big. Let's go with 12. What we're gonna do is carve out sort of a place for a waterfall. So we're just clicking here, carving out, a hole, we just carved out a hole there, a channel. We're just operating on the surface of the model, creating a channel. Now we can actually come in and fill that spot with like a blue here for the waterfall. And we'll go to attach and still in surface mode. If we're in 2D mode, it's gonna to try to attach that plane um, and shoot it up just from whatever plane we're on. But we wanna overlay it over the top. So we're gonna use surface mode and just kind of draw this thing cascading um, down this shape right here. And then when we get to the bottom, we'll now go up to 126, which is the max, and do that. And then we'll actually grab with the face tool and attach. We'll grab one of these guys and pull it all the way down. So there's a really quick way to uh, make a waterfall. The only other thing you could do then at that point in time is try to flatten up because water does not work that way. It does not, unless it's like a fountain or something like that. Um, we can get those down to a level, go back to the new voxel brush and the uh, surface tool, and uh, we could paint over the surface or attach at a smaller size. And that is about all the new tools in there. I'm sure there's more stuff that I just haven't uh, haven't read about yet, but those are the major ones. If you did enjoy this little demonstration, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I do, I don't know, roughly three um, tutorials a week on Magic Voxel, Unity, um, and Maya sometimes. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. That's really it. That's it.